In the daytime we see only sky and clouds and sun and sometimes storms and rains but in the night it does seem heavenly with all the beautiful stars and moon and shooting stars where do all these things go in the day have you ever thought of that i'll do this simple experiment with this fish bowl and with a little bit of milk added to the water to make it slightly less transparent like the atmosphere of the earth now i will put this camera inside the bowl very close to the glass the water that's between the glass and the camera is like the atmosphere that comes between us and when we look towards the sky the phone screen shows what the camera is seeing now these are the stars that we see in the night but as the sun comes around since it's the closest and the brightest now you can see only the light everything else disappears so this is what happens in the day as compared to the night and that's why we only see the sun in the day and sometimes the moon too but not the stars these stars planets satellites meteoroids and many such things that are all around us are called heavenly bodies or celestial objects in a clear unpolluted night sky we can see approximately 3000 stars with the naked eye and if you notice some seem to twinkle while others don't stars themselves don't twinkle but seem to do so because of the earth's atmosphere that creates a visual disturbance to the star's light and it happens only in stars and not the closer planets or satellites apparently if you see the stars from space where there is no atmosphere the stars don't twinkle since moon and the stars are the two main things that we see in the night sky let's learn a little more about them starting with the biggest thing that we see in the night sky moon is what is called a natural satellite of the earth most planets except mercury and venus have one or more similar satellites also called moons like earth revolves or orbits around the sun the moon orbits around the earth in a fixed orbit and it is held in its orbit by the gravity of the earth the moons of all the other planets also orbit around their planets and are held by the gravity of those planets let me share some figures here. The diameter of the moon is one fourth of that of the Earth. Moon's diameter is approximately 3,475 kilometers, while the Earth's diameter is approximately 12,742 kilometers. The moon is actually bigger than Pluto, which was a planet earlier. Mass of the moon is 81 times lesser than the Earth. It's approximately 7.34 into 10 to the power of 22 kgs. Distance of the moon from Earth is only about 384,000 kilometers. And if this distance seems big, wait till you get to the stars in the next topic. The moon is the closest celestial object and therefore it looks so big compared to everything else that we see in the night. The moon is a giant ball of rocks with a surface covered with hard and loose dirt and with giant craters in most places and mountains in other places. It is also said to possibly have some pockets of ice under the surface layer. Moon does not have an atmosphere and therefore there is no life. The craters on the moon are said to be formed because of meteoroids hitting the surface and that doesn't happen much with the earth because they mostly burn in the atmosphere because of air friction and become much smaller by the time they reach the ground. The moon takes 29 days to revolve around the earth and it also takes the same amount of time to do one complete rotation on its own axis. So as a result, the same side of the moon is visible from the earth at all times and that's why it always looks the same. We see the rabbit on the moon and we never see what is called the dark side of the moon, the phases of the moon. The sun remains the same every day though it changes its color visibility in the morning and the evening but you must have noticed that the moon looks different every night especially if you are looking at it on consecutive nights it is known as different phases of the moon the two extreme ends of these phases are the new moon and the full moon there are a couple of reasons for these phases the moon is revolving around the earth and takes 29 days to revolve around the earth Meanwhile, the Earth is revolving around the Sun. The Sun is a luminous body, while the Moon and the Earth are not. Other luminous bodies like stars are too far away to be considered. So the Moon is visible to us only because of sunlight reflecting off it. The Earth's rotational axis is tilted at 23.4 degrees and therefore the Moon's revolution axis is also tilted, though both are not exactly the same. And further on this topic, I will explain it while doing an experiment in the TIY section of this lesson. Let's learn about stars. The sun is the best example of a star. It is the closest to us and the one that we see every day of our lives, unless it's cloudy. The sun, like all stars, is constantly burning due to nuclear fusion reaction, where hydrogen is transformed into helium, emitting enormous amount of heat and light. The sun is just one of the billions of stars in the universe, and it's not even among the biggest. Most stars are hundreds of times further away from us as as compared to the sun and therefore they all look like little burning dots in the sky. The sun itself seems to rise in the east and set in the west every day 
followed by the moon. It is very interesting that the statement is only half true. Even though the moon actually revolves around the earth and the sun on the other hand remains in one place, but we see them moving only because we are moving means the earth is moving at all times. Let me give you an analogy. When you are looking out of a moving car or a bus or a train, you are going one way, but doesn't it look like everything else is going the opposite way? The same is with the sun and the moon in relation to the earth. Since the sun seems to rise in the east and set in the west, it simply means that the earth is rotating in the opposite direction from west to east. To show this, I have put a small camera on the globe itself. The camera is how we stand on the earth and look above towards the sun and the stars. You can see that the earth is rotating counterclockwise and the camera is moving west to east. But then the camera recording shows that the sun is going in the opposite direction. So it's going east to west. That's how we see the sun and the moon travel across the sky. While the earth rotates on its axis and makes it seem like all the celestial objects are rotating, there is one star that doesn't rotate and that's called the pole star. It's called the Dhruv Tara in Hindi. And this doesn't seem to rotate because it is in the same line as the axis of rotation of the earth over the northern hemisphere and because of that it can't even be seen from the southern hemisphere. Stars are so far away from us that things like kilometers and miles are just too small a unit to measure these distances. For those kind of distances, the unit used is a light year. A light year is a distance that light will travel in one year. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, that's per second. One year has around 31.5 million seconds. So the distance of one light year means 300,000 kilometers into 31.5 million seconds. That's 9,460 billion kilometers. This number seems huge, but now think about it. Apart from the sun, the nearest star is Proxima Centauri and that is 4.3 light years away from Earth. It's approximately 40,000 billion kilometers away from Earth. The interesting part here is that if you see the star today, you would be seeing the star as it was 4.3 years ago because that's the time the light took to reach your eyes. Thankfully, the sun is not that far away. It is just 8 light minutes away. A light minute is the distance that light will travel in a minute. Let's calculate that. Light travels at 300,000 km per second and there are 480 seconds in 8 minutes. Therefore, the distance between the Earth and the Sun is 300,000 into 480. That's 144 million kilometers. Constellations are a collection of stars which are always visibly together and arranged in the same pattern in the sky. These patterns are like join the dot drawings where they are given names based on the shapes they resemble. And all of them seem to move from the east to the west in the sky since the earth is moving from the west to the east. There are many stars in a constellation but we generally consider only the brighter ones for identifying the pattern. Also these stars are not in the same plane or the same distance from the earth. Still they maintain their positions with respect to how we see them. Some important constellations that we learn about are Ursa Major, Orion, Cassiopeia and Leo Major. Ursa Major is also known as Great Bear, Big Dipper, which means a big ladle. And in Hindi, it's called Sapt Rishi because it is identified by seven of the brightest stars in that group. It can be seen in April in the northern part of the sky. This is how the Big Dipper looks like with all the seven stars. It also looks like a kite with a tail. If we draw a line from the outer stars to the brightest star that comes in the way, that is the pole star. And since the pole star does not move, Ursa Major and the entire sky of stars seem to revolve around it. Orion is also known as the Hunter, while the Indian name is Mrig and it's visible in the sky in the winter season. Orion has the maximum number of stars but the pattern is recognized by 8 main stars. These 3 stars are also called the Orion's Belt because you can see that it looks like that. The seriously bright or the brightest star in the sky is called Sirius and I deliberately said seriously so that you can connect the word brightest to Sirius or Sirius. If you take a line from this star through the others in the Orion's belt, it will reach Sirius. Cassiopeia is formed by five main stars forming a W or an M depending on how you see it in the sky. In modern Indian astronomy, Cassiopeia is known as Sharmishta and it is visible during winter in the early part of the night. Leo Major or Leo constellation consists of nine main stars and it forms the pattern resembling a lion and therefore in Hindi it's called Simha as well. Let's do a recap and move on to the TIY where we'll actually make the phases of the moon. Night sky. We can see more than 3000 stars in the night but only one in the day and that's the sun. Celestial objects also called heavenly bodies are the planets, satellites, meteors and many other things that are all around us in the universe. Stars twinkle because of the earth's atmosphere 
that creates visual disturbance to the star's light. Moon Moon is a natural satellite of the Earth that revolves around the Earth in a fixed orbit. The diameter of the Moon is one-fourth and the mass of the Moon is 1 by 81 of that of the Earth. The distance of the Moon from the Earth is only about 384,000 kilometers. Moon takes 29 days to make one complete revolution around the Earth and it also takes 29 days for one complete rotation around its own axis. The Moon keeps changing its appearance throughout the month and these are called the phases of the Moon. They range from new moon to the full moon and then go back to the new moon. The reasons for these phases is that the visible part of the moon keeps changing depending on the moon's position in relation to the earth and the sun. The sun is one of the billions of stars in the universe but it's the closest to earth. All stars are constantly burning due to nuclear fusion reaction. The sun seems to rise in the east and set in the west every day because the earth is rotating in the opposite direction from west to east. The pole star doesn't seem to rotate because it's along the line of Earth's rotational axis. A light year is the distance that a light will travel in a year. That's approximately 9,460 billion kilometers. The closest star apart from the Sun is Proxima Centauri and that is 4.3 light years away from the Earth. Sunlight takes 8 minutes to reach the Earth from the Sun. Constellations Constellations are a collection of stars which are always visible together and arranged in the same pattern in the sky. There are around 88 constellations that we know of. Constellations that we learned a little more about are Ursa Major, Orion, Cassiopeia, Leo Major. In this DIY, you will be able to show people how light from the sun reflects off the moon and how it creates different shadows that cause what is called the different phases of the moon. So this is what we are going to make, an orbit of the moon around the earth. There are four main things in this one. It's the earth, and then there's the ring and then there's the ball that's the moon and we need a base for the globe this small earth would be better if you buy it because it will be cheaper than even making it for the moon you can use a TT ball or any other similar sized light ball that is one fourth the size of the earth that you get for the orbit you'll need a steel wire that you can buy in a hardware store you just need to buy two rounds of it not the full roll just about two meters but the good thing is that it's already bent in a circle so half the job is done now make a diameter of around 30 to 40 centimeters as shown and where they meet bend it to 90 degrees as shown such that you can bend both sides and both sides should be fairly equal hold these bent wires together and then bend them again as shown. Straighten this part of the wires. Hold these wires and tape them up. You will need a small piece of wire to hold these two wires in a proper circle. Tape it to the circle in four places as shown. You can cut off the straight wires before they reach the circle. Note, this bend should not be 90 degrees but it needs to be more than 90. Now we need to make a base which can be done using the card roll of a used up tape. Hold the wire slightly opened up and then mark it in 4 places as shown. Now I'm adjusting the marking here so that they are the same on either side because the wire was not absolutely straight. This is how the wire will be placed. Now you need to make grooves and cuts on the marks and that is to put the wire inside. Use a hacksaw or just a hacksaw blade to do that. The cut just needs to be about 2 or 3 millimeters deep. Just enough for the wire, that's all. On the other side of the wider cuts, mark and cut there as well. So in effect, you need to make 6 cuts. Put the wire in as shown. Keep in mind that the base should be closer to the back and therefore the front part of the ring from the center of the base should be more than the rear part. It will correct itself later. And this is how the globe will be placed. Use glue to stick the globe on the base and then let it set. The support of the globe should ideally be in line with the support of this ring. Now cut the wire about 6 cm from the base and then bend it as shown and tighten the bend using a plier. 
Now you need to correct the angle of the orbit of the moon to almost align it to the angle of the earth. Actually the axis of earth's rotation and the axis of moon's revolution are not identical. So we need not bother to make it perfectly aligned. Now you need to put the ball on the orbit. For that you first need to mark the ball at two opposite points and then make small holes which you can do with a soldering iron. Then fill up the ball with a bit of the glue. You should definitely wear thick cotton gloves to do this or ask an adult to help. This glue will make the bottom heavy and keep the moon standing otherwise it will keep rolling around. Now you need to make a cut on the moon to put it on the wire. Use a hacksaw and once again either wear leather gloves or ask an adult to help because this part is tough. Make sure that the cut reaches both the holes. This is how the ball will fit on the orbit wire. You might need to align the orbit once again because now it's become a bit heavier. Now you could paint the ball white and if you want to make it more detailed then use a picture of the moon from the video and then make the rabbit as well using a little bit of black mixed with the white. But this needs to be done on the opposite side of the cut so that it faces the earth. Now all you need is a torchlight for the sun and you can get all the faces of the moon. Let me show you once again. And at two points of the earth's revolution around the sun, there are chances that eclipses can happen. If the moon comes between the earth and the sun, then there's a solar eclipse because people who are in line with the shadow will not be able to see the sun. And if the earth comes between the moon and the sun, then we get what is called a lunar eclipse. In that case, first you see the moon in the night and then the earth's shadow comes over the moon. And in a very little time, it moves away from the moon and you can see the moon once again. Things required for the DIY project. Globe, table tennis ball, steel wire around 2 meters long, pliers, insulation tape, empty tape roll cardboard, marker, hacksaw or a hacksaw blade, glue gun, soldering iron, black paint and white paint, paintbrush, torchlight. I'm sure you thought this lesson was simply out of the world. It literally was. And in the next, we'll stay out there. So join me in space in the next lesson as well.